welcome to the With Flow podcast, a weekly show for purpose-driven women who are ready to embrace a feminine approach to business. We'll be chatting all things cycle awareness and using your intuitive superpowers, combined with the more practical aspects of business, like systems and planning. I'm your host, Laura, from Business With Flow, cyclical business mentor and systems queen. My mission is to show you that business can be fun and easy, that you can do it in a way that is right for you and feel inspired, organized, calm and in control. So let's jump into this week's episode. Hello and welcome to the With Flow podcast. Now, if you have been struggling with growing your following, growing your audience and being visible online, this week's interview is going to be such good value for you. In this week's episode, I'm talking to Lisa Simone Richards. Lisa works with online coaches who struggle to break through all of the noise online and want to be seen everywhere. We talked about how we can be more visible online. The difference between the content that we create to nurture our existing community and the content that we can put out into the world that gets us visible and draws more people into our community. We talked about the different types of content, pitching to be on podcasts or guest blogs, writing for different publications and so much more. So if you're wanting to get more visible in your business and grow your audience and your following, this is a great episode for you to dive into. So with that being said, let's jump into the conversation. Welcome to the podcast. I'm really excited to have you here today. This is going to be such a fun conversation, Laura. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, it's great. And as I was saying before we hit record, it's something that we don't talk enough about or have enough conversations about, I think, in the online business world. So I'm really excited to introduce you to my audience and talk about different ways of the visible and getting in front of other people's audiences, building our credibility, all of that good stuff, because it's so important when it comes to growing our businesses, growing our launches and all of that, all of that important stuff that we do when we uh, have an online business. So I would love to get started by asking, like, we know that, as I just said, being visible, growing our audience is really important in order to get the things that we're selling in front of bigger audiences, more people, making sure that we're reaching the right people. I think one of the misconceptions that a lot of people in the online business world have is that you just need to have an Instagram profile or a Facebook page <laughs> and magically everyone will find you and you'll have this big, amazing audience and it will be, you know, simple and easy. And I think we all know, particularly when you are using things like social media and you are at the hands of the algorithm, that is not always the case. So what are some of the other ways, thinking outside just having an Instagram page, that people can start to be more visible and grow their following and their credibility online? So you could see me have a visual reaction to that. Yes. In <laughs> <laughs> so this is the difference between content and visibility. And this is where I think when people understand the little mix up that they're having here, so much is going to open up for them. So there's a huge difference between content and visibility. So let me make that distinction. Content is what we are putting on our Instagram account, on our Facebook, what we're emailing to our list. It is what is going to nurture our existing followers, the people who are already on our email list. So it's good. Let's say you have 200 people in your ecosystem. What you're putting on social media is going to, you know, get in front of, you know, not even all 200 of those people, maybe 20 of them, 10%. So what we really need to also be focusing on at the same time is visibility. How are we making sure we get in front of new people every single week, adding new people to our email list, adding new qualified leads and followers to our Instagram account? Not just anybody who thinks our content's kind of funny because it goes viral. So, um. It, there's almost this mentality of just like you were mentioning, if I build it, they will come. They will not. Instagram has a billion accounts and so does TikTok that are really entertaining with cute puppies and celebrity breakups. So we're competing <laughs> against all of those. 
So we have to make sure that we're clear that just because we're putting out content, it's for the people who are already in our ecosystem. We have to look at our analytics and take a look at your email list, your followers, your Facebook analytics. Month over month, are you seeing those numbers grow? Because if you're not, that's exactly a reason as to why you're not seeing an increase in sales. So we need to make sure we're getting consistent visibility, bringing new people into our world so that we have new people to use our nurturing marketing content with. So what are some of the ways then other than, you know, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, all of those things that we can start to uh, get more visibility or get exposure to some of those other audiences and bring people in so that we can then continue to nurture them with our content? Yeah, there are a number of ways. And personally, I'm not somebody who loves to be on Instagram. Like I'll be on the app multiple times a day, looking at stories, liking content, commenting, but like I barely post anything myself. So the good news is for people who are like me, there are a bunch of other options. So one of the things that I love to share with my clients, and I think this is really healthy for every online service-based business owner, is to think about having what I call a healthy media mix. So what I mean by this is your ideal client has one of three ways that they prefer to consume information. They either like to read it, they like to listen to it, or they like to watch it. Um, an example I often share is my husband and I love to cook in the kitchen together. And a recipe that we make every few weeks is a Thai red curry. So we found the recipe on YouTube and every time we make it, cause you know, I'm not doing it so frequently that I remember it. I turn it on on YouTube, I play it, I pause it, I do the thing. I play the video again and that's how I make the recipe. Now we've watched this so many times that my husband's like, I like her voices nails down a chalkboard for me. Is there a blog post on how to do this? So we both want the delicious dinner at the end of the day, but we have different ways of wanting to get there. So it's great to have a way that your ideal client can read about you, hear you, and see you. So some different ways to get visibility beyond exclusively relying on social media, ways that people can read about you. That could be writing a guest blog post rather than writing a blog post on your own site. Remember the purpose is to leverage somebody else's platform to get in front of new eyes. Alternatively, you can contribute content to a website and it's super easy. The fun thing about PR is like people think it's so hard to do, but I just get to demystify the how for them. So are you curious about how you could write an article for a bigger website or a magazine? Super easy. Go on Google, type in write for us, W-R-I-T-E, write for us and whatever your industry niche is. Write for us relationships, write for us money, write for us online business. And you're going to get a bunch of sites that are looking for contributors who are experts in your subject area. So that is a great way to take the content that you're already doing and put it in front of new people. Alternatively, if you're not somebody who likes to actually write the content, you could pitch an article to uh, Forbes.com or whatever the relevant site would be. And somebody who works there will write it and they'll just interview you and ask you a few questions and include your name in your quotes. So even just off the top of our head, we could be doing guest blog posting, we could be contributing content, or we could be interviewed. So that's three ways of written content. Let's move up to the next way of creating that healthy media mix and being heard. That could be being interviewed on a podcast like this one. We're just having a conversation. And I know anybody who's listening to this show has had a conversation before. So it's just another opportunity to talk about your business in a bit of a different way. Alternatively, you could be on Clubhouse, whether that is hosting or moderating a room. That's a great way to get in front of some new audiences as well without the pressure of being seen. Or for those people who may have a local business with its bricks and mortar and you rely on local foot traffic, radio, not as sexy as it used to be, but does make sense for those people who can actually walk into your facility. So we could be on podcasts, we could be on clubhouse, we could be on radio. So that's three more ways of being seen. If my math is right, we're at six ways right now. So we talked about being read about, we talked about being heard about. Now let's move up to being seen. Back in the day, this used to be television exclusively. That was the only way you could broadcast visually to an audience. But this is where some social media can come into play. Rather than doing, you know, a live in your own Facebook group, something I do every Tuesday at 10 a.m., you could go live in someone else's Facebook group and have them host you for an interview. 
You could do a guest training in somebody else's mastermind. Today, someone came in and did a guest training in my group, and I just actually came out of doing guest training in somebody else's. So, you know, the circle of life today. Maybe you're being seen speaking on a live or a virtual stage. Maybe you're going live on someone else's Instagram account and you guys are going live together. So there's so many different ways that you could take the things that you're probably already doing right now, but leverage somebody else's platform so that you're taking the same content and putting it in front of new faces. And that's a way that you can now start bringing people back into your world. At the end of a podcast interview, share a, a link to a lead magnet so people can get on your email list. At the end of an Instagram Instagram live with someone, tell them to come and follow you and then shoot them a DM and start a conversation that way. So I'm pretty sure we've gone through at least 10 different ways that we can start getting visibility. And again, it's not rocket science. A lot of it is taking the existing things that we're doing and just shopping it in front of new people. I love that because, and as you said, we're already creating this content. So it's just looking for ways to repurpose that or repackage it in maybe a slightly different format and putting it on other platforms and being able to then get the visibility of people that maybe might not be on Instagram, but they might be reading, as you said, might be reading Forbes or Entrepreneur or um, some of those bigger platforms and you can be discovered, I guess, in, in that way. So that's great. Do you have to be at a certain stage of business or a certain level of success for a lack of a better term? in order to be featured on some of those bigger platforms or can you start early in your business journey? So this is another thing I'd love to demystify. Whether you are brand new and fresh out of your coaching certification, fantastic. Visibility is for you because if you're the best kept secret, how is nobody, how is anyone going to know that you exist and hire you to work with you? Alternatively, if you, if you're someone who's been in the industry for let's say 20, 30, 40 plus years and you're a veteran, Wonderful. You know the tried, tested, and true secrets of the industry. You know what fads come and go. So you have the blessing of expertise on your side. So no matter whether you're brand new, you've been doing it for a little while, or you've been doing it forever, uh, let's make it right and give ourselves a reason to get out there. Even for those people who might be listening and they're thinking, well, that sounds great, but like, I how would I ever put myself out there? I might not even know what I'm going to sell yet. Um, back, I think around 2019, I worked with a woman named Marta Spurk. And the funny thing is, anytime I give an example, someone can Google it and see the results that this person created. So that'll sell you itself. But when I started working with Marta in 2019, I was coaching her inside of my friend's program. She didn't even know what she was going to put on offer, but she knew she wanted to get in front of people. And I was like, that's really smart. The first time I launched something, I had no one to sell it to. So really good of you but building a buyer's list in advance. But she decided to play around with different things. She got a featured on a few different television segments. She got featured on radio. And what was really awesome is she realized that she loves delivering live content and hosting workshops. So by virtue of having been on television, having been on radio, building relationships with the hosts of those platforms, when she hosted her first live event in Colorado, Guess who some of the keynote speakers were in the panel list? The television show host and the radio show host. And guess what? They have a lot more pull than she did. So that helped her fill up her events. And then she was able to make an offer on the back end. So it's actually a really brilliant idea to make sure that no matter where you're at, you're getting visibility. Because again, you could have the best program in the world, but if no one knows about it, how are they going to buy it? Absolutely. We talk a lot about launching on this podcast. and. One of the things that I always say to my clients is you can't wait until you're about to launch something to then try and grow your audience between your launches is the best time to be building that engagement, creating those connections and those relationships, increasing your reach, increasing, you know, your email list, that kind of thing. So that by the time you come to selling, people have already gotten to know you. And if the thing that you're selling is something they need, it just becomes a no brainer for them to purchase. So. I love that. It's a great example of how you can leverage those things to build, to build up your audience and build up your credibility. So we talked a little bit again, before we hit record about creating buzz for when you're about to launch something, what are some of the ways that you could leverage some of these other platforms to create a bit of a buzz and a bit of hype for, for your launches? Yeah. So one of the, I remember this marketing adage from years ago. You know, maybe some, some of you have heard it before. It uh, takes seven touch points before a consumer takes action. Well, 
that was before Instagram and TikTok and all those other, you know, fun little apps available at our thumbs. So, you know, it's somewhere now around the, you know, the number's always changing, take it with a grain of salt, but it's somewhere around 17 touch points. So somebody really has to hear about you a number of times, once or twice just isn't enough. So if you know that you have a book coming out, you're about to launch a course or a program, you know, with knowing that about six weeks in advance, start going on a tour promoting yourself, whether that's booking five podcast interviews every single week, which is way easier to do than you might think, guys. I don't spend more than 30 minutes a week pitching podcasts and I book at least 10 interviews every single month. You might want to just go all in on pitching podcasts. You might want to ask friends if they would be willing to mail on your behalf. And when they have something to put out there, you could mail for them. That's a really easy way to get visibility that takes nothing out of you. You could ask friends who have groups, could you do a 15 minute live with them? So there are actually a lot of easy ways to even take advantage of your existing network to get visibility and then even have that longer term strategy of, okay, what are the right podcasts for me to be featured on? Who are the people I want to develop relationships with because they have access to the live or virtual stages it would make sense for me to be on. So we can take that short term strategy of who's in our network right now that can we can leverage their platform and then who can we have that longer term vision of wanting to build a relationship with so we can get access to their platform. I love that. And one of the questions I had written down here was I wanted to talk about the right way to pitch, to be on someone's podcast or YouTube channel or collaborate with someone as a podcast host. One of the things I didn't anticipate when I first launched this podcast was the number of random pitches that I would get from people. And when I received the pitch from you, it was like a breath of fresh air because you actually took the time to explain how you found me, why you thought what you had to say could be of value to my audience, what you could talk about, and then what they would be able to walk away with at the end of the interview. And you actually took the time rather than just having this copy and paste template that you would just literally, you know, spamming as many people as you could with the exact same blurb. You actually took the time to personalize it. And I appreciated that so much because honestly, I can tell you, I get a lot of very interesting pictures in my inbox. So can you talk a little bit about how you go about finding the right people to pitch to and how you then go and pitch to be on those podcasts? Yeah, I can share one really tangible tip that people can put into practice right now. If they're like, okay, I would love to be on podcasts, but I wouldn't even know which ones to pitch myself to really easy example. And I'm going to use this word with a grain of salt, but think about somebody who is competitive to you. And now I'm a big believer in collaboration over competition, but for the sake of explanation, let's go with competitive. Someone who does the exact same thing as you. Who's someone who is, let's say, two to three steps ahead of you, and they're doing something in their business that you would love to emulate. You would love to get to the level that they are at. You could go on Google, type in that individual's name plus the word podcast, because that's going to bring up shows that that individual has been on. And you already know, number one, this is a podcast that does interviews. That's not a solo cast. And number two, they cover my topic. I just need to pitch them an idea from a different angle. So I'm not replicating what the original person talked about. So one of my really good friends who is not competitive at all, her name is Christina Nicholson. She also does PR. She has courses and she has an agency just like I do. I can go on Google and type in Christina Nicholson podcast and I'll see shows that she's been on. And then I can start reviewing the shows and be like, that would be a good fit for me. That would also be a good fit for me. And that's a great way to get started finding the shows. And so then when you reach out to people, I hate to use the word formula, but do you have um, a strategy or a formula that you use so that you are then giving value or pitching in the right way without, so a lot of people, they probably think about pitching and feel a little icky or uncomfortable about it. So, you know, how do you do that without feeling like you're spamming people or anything like that? Yeah, I teach my clients something that I call seven pillars of the perfect pitch that teaches you how to write a really good pitch. So I'll walk you through a few of those so we don't make it too overwhelming. Uh, Number one, the first thing that you want to do is have a very quick introduction. This is where I see people go wrong off the bat. Hi, my name's Lisa Snow Richards. And this one time when I was 11 years old, I saw a magazine that inspired me to get into public relations. And like people will write a novel about their life story. And like at this point, the reader like doesn't know who you are. They're probably busy and they don't care about your life story. So a quick introduction looks something like, and again, 
hit rewind, go a few seconds back to record this and hear it again. It might look something like, hey, Laura, my name's Lisa Sloan Richards. I'm a PR and visibility strategist, and I work with online coaches who want to break through the noise and get seen everywhere. That's it. There's context. You can put me in a box. You know who I work with, who I help, who I serve. Bonus points, hyperlink your name to your website, because guess what? That host is going to do their research on you. And now they don't have to take that extra step of going to Google and typing in your name. They can just click on your name and go straight to your site and do their homework. So a really quick introduction. The second thing that I like to do is create connection and showcase familiarity. That's two and three roll together. This is like a quiz. Lisa, can you remember your seven steps? So the second thing that I like to do is make sure exactly like you just said, the host knows that this isn't a canned copy and paste pitch, that I have done my research, that I understand the show. So I will make a point of saying, you know, I came across your show, two episodes that I liked were X and Y and why I liked them. Maybe something that I learned or a way that are related to me. So the person knows, okay, she actually has done some research. Maybe there's something that they're doing on their show that I like that I can highlight. I talked to a coach yesterday who, a podcast host and a coach. And he asked all of his guests 10 questions. And I said, oh my God, I love so-and-so's answer to number three. Like that shows that I'm paying attention. This is not, I couldn't send that to anybody else. It would not make sense. So the next thing that I like to do, I'm breaking away from the one through seven formula now, just being a little more generic, is I always like to lead with value. Your listeners are on a mission to create X, Y, and Z, and here's how I can support it. This is the real result that they want to have. And at the end of an episode, here are the things they're going to learn. So it's not, hey, I have a course that I'm launching in a few weeks. Can I come on your podcast and talk about it? No, no one's trying to give you a free 30-minute advertisement. That's not interesting. But if you're going to leave with value, and the way that I always like to think about it from pitching is how can I pitch an idea that anyone who listens to this 30-minute episode regardless of if they download my lead magnet or work with me or join my Facebook group, how can I make sure that they have a win that's going to help them move forward? When you come at it from that perspective, the person reading the email can feel it. And so when you're leading with that value, when you're leading with this is what your audience is going to take away at the end, all of a sudden it becomes so much easier for the host to say yes to you because you're not making it about yourself. And a really interesting test to do, let's say you're writing a podcast pitch that you're about to hit send on, before you hit send, scroll to the left margin of that page and see how many paragraphs begin with I, me, or my. And if they're all beginning with I, me, or my, guess what? You're talking about yourself and the other person doesn't care. Shift it to make it about the listener, about the value, about what's on the other side. That's when it's going to land a whole lot better. Ah, oh, yes. Yes, I was nodding along the whole time. You you obviously embody exactly what you teach, and that is exactly how I felt when I received your your email. This is such a breath of fresh air to someone who's coming at it. And how can you give value to my audience rather than, hey, I just want to get exposure for the thing that I'm trying to sell. I wish more people would take that advice and take that approach. <laughs> What we have to remember is the person that we're reaching out to, they have poured their blood, sweat, and tears into collecting this audience, into creating this resource. And they didn't build it just to give it to you so that you could take advantage of it. So respect that and let the other person feel that. And it's way easier to get a yes. So if people have been listening to this and they're thinking, this is great, this is amazing. What are some tips that you could give to people if they're just getting started on maybe moving out of just having Instagram or just having a Facebook group? What, what is the best way for them to get started? I think the best way to get started, because again, there's that imposter complex of who am I to say this? Should I really put myself out there? It, it, it's more than likely going to come up. I like to be realistic about that. So how can we work with this as opposed to working against it? So rather than just starting off with putting yourself out there for podcasts and television and interviews and stages, that could probably feel a little bit overwhelming. Let's start off with something more manageable. You're already going live on Instagram and you're doing stories. You're doing lives. You're doing reels, whatever the thing of the day is. I swear to God, I pledge to never do a reel in my life. I don't know how to do it and I don't want to know how to do it. But I do like watching them. That being said, you could think to yourself, okay, who's somebody else I know who's complimentary? Say you work in fitness. Is there someone you know who in nutrition? And you could say to them, hey, I would love to come live on your page. You know, let your audience know on Tuesday at 1 p.m. We're going to do a live or a takeover. And then next month, I'll have you on mine. 
that's a really easy way to get started because you're doing something you already do. It's a little bit of a crutch because if you're going live together, you have someone else to jam with. It's not you by yourself. And that's a way to at least start getting in front of new people. If you're doing something you already would. And at the end say to follow me, here's my Instagram handle. And now you're bringing new people back into your world. And that content that you've already been doing is now starting to reach new people. So, so good. And you're right about the overwhelm. Sometimes it can feel like, particularly when you think, okay, what I'm doing isn't working, then I have to go and try a hundred other things and just hope that one of those things will work. So I love that, you know, just start with what you're already doing, but maybe add a little bit more to it. I think that's great. Rather than it's trying to overwhelm ourselves with all of the hundred things that we could possibly be doing. Well, I could sit here and talk to you for hours. This has been such a great conversation, but we've been really talking for close to half an hour. Are there any final words of wisdom that you would like to leave the listeners with today? I think one thing I frequently say is to make sure that you haven't just, like you said, invested 30 minutes and listened to this and being like, oh, wow, that's really nice and written a bunch of no ideas on a notepad. Pick one thing that you can put into practice. And I gave you a bunch of nuggets. You can do that Google search for right for us. You can think about a visibility partner you can connect with. You can search someone who's competitive with the word podcast to find some shows to be on. So you've got a bunch of resources in front of you now to be able to get more visibility. So pick the one that lands with you the most and do something right now to put it into practice. That's the best way you can thank yourself for the time you invested in listening to this episode. Amazing. Very, very wise advice. So if people would like to find out more about you, um, maybe work with you, how can people find out more about you? Where can they find you online? So one of the little secrets that I give away is, you know, you were sharing with me how much that pitch resonated with you. It was a breath of fresh air. And that's something that I'm blessed to be complimented on frequently. And the truth is there is a template. There are a few tweaks that I make to make it unique to everybody. And I promise I do my homework. But if you're like, what is that pitch Lisa writes and how is it so good? I'll actually let you see it and I will give you a fill in the blank template so you can actually shift it and make it your own. So if you head to www.theperfectpodcastpitch.com, you're going to see the exact word for word pitch that I use to book podcast interviews. And then I'm also going to share with you a fill in the blank template so you can take my skeleton and make it your own. So again, to download that free template, it's at www.theperfectpodcastpitch.com theperfectpodcastpitch.com. Awesome. Thank you. We'll make sure that we pop that into the show notes so that people can go and download it. And as I said before, if you were listening to this and you are wanting to pitch to be on podcasts or guest blog or whatever it might be that you want to do, please follow Lisa's advice because as someone who gets a lot of pitches, it honestly makes a huge difference in how you reach out to people and how you approach that. So yes, please, please go download that template and please listen to um, what Lisa has been saying. Well, thank you so much for being here. That was such a great conversation. And I, I know for me, I got a lot of value out of that and a few ideas that I'm going to go away and investigate. So thank you for sharing that with us. It was so great. Thank you for having me, Laura. Thank you so much for tuning in to this episode. I hoped that you loved hearing all of the wisdom that Lisa shared with us. In the show notes for this episode, you can find all of the links to connect with Lisa on Instagram, her website, and also to grab her perfect podcast pitch template. Thanks so much for tuning in. Until next week, bye for now.